In this lesson, we're going to continue on what we were working on last lesson, the defrost sequence of operation. Now, this set of slides is all about how things are supposed to work. You need to be able to understand actual sequence of operation before you can actually fix or repair a unit because you have to be able to figure out what's wrong. So we are going to go through the difference in defrost and defrost sequence of operation in this video. Okay. Um, we're going to start off by talking about electric defrost. And we use the defrost termination here. Okay, so we're going to do an initial start up of the system. It's called hot pull out, pull down, disconnect is closed. The defrost timer motor is energized. Okay, in this situation, defrost motor is energized continuously because it is commercial. The temperature control is calling for cooling. That's the cut in temperature. Okay, cut out means it's satisfied and not calling anymore. Cut in. We energize the compressor and the condenser fan motors. The mullion and style heaters are energized. Now, when we're talking about mullion and style heaters, these are the heaters that keep the surrounding areas of the doors free from frost. Okay, if you go into a grocery store and you feel the refrigeration systems, the, the freezers like in the aisles and stuff, you'll feel that the area around the door is sort of warm. That's because there's a heater in there that's always energized. Okay, the evaporator fan motors in this case are delayed from coming on until the evaporator temperature reaches about zero to five degrees. Now that's something that's an approximate temperature. The way this works is there's a thermostat attached to the evaporator coil itself. When the temperature is above zero to five degrees, we do not want the evaporator fans to run because it's going to blow warm air around the case itself. We begin the heat removal or the cycle or the refrigeration cycle. Now, the timer calls for defrost because, again, it's based on time. The condensing unit and evaporator fan motors are de-energized. The defrost heaters are energized. Some cases we also energize a drain line heater because the drain line runs through an area that's way below freezing. Okay, if the evaporator should warm up before the timer times out a defrost, the defrost termination and fan delay switch will switch positions, sending a signal to the timer override solenoid and terminate the cycle. Okay, this is time on, time or temperature off. If the temperature control is calling, the compressor will start. The evaporator fans will delay coming on until the evaporator temperature drops below 0 to 5 degrees. To make the defrost um, termination and fan delay switch, switch positions, therefore energizing the evaporator fan. So basically this defrost termination time temperature switch or fan delay switch is what we consider a double pole switch, okay? It's it's a double pole switch based on thermostat, okay? So if we come in here, let's come back, and let's just, okay, so we have our, this is actually going to be a temperature actuated switch when it's in the up when it's in the down position it goes to my evaporator fan motor and when it's in its up position okay it goes back to my time clock on the x terminal and i'll show you that but we have efm here okay so what's going on is we have a, temp a double pole switch where the temperature, okay, or double throw switch where the temperature is actually, when it drops, it energizes my evaporator fan. When it rises, it turn it sends a signal back to my uh, defrost time clock on the X terminal. And again, that's a really rough picture, but that's how it works. So the evaporator fans will come will delay coming on until it drops. Okay. The cooling cycle starts all over again. 
Now, in a pump down system with electric defrost, this is the one where we actually remove the refrigerant from the system, from the evaporator before it shuts down. So the thermostat does not directly control the compressor. The thermostat controls the solenoid valve. And you'll see that on your trainer boards if you're in the shop. Okay, so in the cooling mode, the thermostat calls for heat. The evaporator fans are always running. The thermostat energizes the liquid line solenoid. Refrigerant flows from the high side to the low. The low pressure control senses that increase in refrigerant pressure on the suction line, and it closes or cuts in. The low pressure control energizes the condensing unit. Okay, now, at the completion of the cooling cycle, let's say the thermostat has reached its set temperature, the TSAS satisfies, it opens the circuit, and de-energizes the liquid line solenoid. The compressor continues to run and pumps the refrigerant from the low side to the high side. Once the refrigerant is out of the evaporator, it's almost in a vacuum or very low pressure, the low pressure control opens, de-energizes the condensing unit. The purpose of this is that we never have liquid refrigerant sitting in the evaporator because if you don't have the solenoid, liquid refrigerant will migrate from the condensing unit to the evaporator on the, on the um, off cycle. Liquid refrigerant will always migrate to the cooler temperatures. So in the defrost mode on this, again, the thermostat calls for cooling. The evaporator fan motors are running. The T-STAT energizes the liquid line solenoid. Refrigerant flows from the high to the low side. Okay, the low pressure control closes, cuts in, just like we talked about. The low pressure energizes the condensing unit. So now the time clock initiates a defrost cycle. Again, the time clock initiates the defrost cycle. The defrost heater is energized. The liquid line solenoid is de-energized. The compressor pumps the refrigerant from the low side to the high side. The low pressure control opens, de-energizing the condensing unit. Okay, the time clock or the DT DC, okay, the defrost termination control ends the defrost cycle. Okay, so again, this will terminate based on either time or temperature. Now we have one more sequence of operation, and that's the pump down with a hot gas defrost. Okay, remember, we have three types of defrost. One is off cycle, one is electric, and one is hot gas. So on the hot gas in the cooling mode, the T-STAT calls for cooling. Evaporator fans are always running except when they defrost. The T-STAT energizes the liquid line solenoid. Refrigerant flows from the high to the low side. The low pressure control closes and cuts in. The low pressure control energizes the condensing unit. The unit runs and, sat and cools the space. It will eventually satisfy and de-energize the liquid line solenoid. The compressor pumps the refrigerant from the low side to the high side. And the low pressure control opens, okay, de-energizing the condensing unit. In defrost mode, now here's where we have a little bit of change from the electric defrost. The T-STAT is calling for cooling. The thermostat energizes the liquid line solenoid. Refrigerant flows from the high side to the low. The low pressure control closes, cuts in the unit. The low pressure energizes the condensing unit. The time clock now goes ahead and initiates a defrost. Now, we energize a hot gas solenoid. Okay, we de-energize the liquid line solenoid. The compressor continues to run, pumping hot gas through the hot gas line, which basically comes off of the, it tees into the discharge line from the compressor before it goes to the condenser, and it connects into the evaporator after the metering device. In other words, it bypasses the condenser, the liquid line, and the metering device. So hot gas goes directly into the evaporator. The low pressure control remains closed because all it sees is pressure from the low side. The time clock or defrost termination ends the defrost cycle, 
and we continue on with cooling. Once the defrost cycle is ended, the liquid line solenoid is reopened if we have a need for cooling, and the high pressure or the hot gas solenoid is de-energized, which is closing it. So what you want to do is go back through this and you want to totally understand the steps of the cooling and defrost modes in these systems. We are going to take a brief break in our next video from our defrost and we're going to talk about some additions that we need to talk about on low temperature and refrigeration systems.